Nothing. All right, enough of that frivolity. Oh, I see how it is. I see how it is. Thank you. Now shut up. (laughs) A commissioner has spoken again. I got interrupted yesterday by a beautiful lady who dragged me out of this studio and kissed me until I went blind. (laughs) (laughs) And tell y'all. And to tell y'all I don't mind one damn bit when she does that will be an understatement. That's Dr. K. I'm going to finish what I started yesterday when talking about Oklahoma City and the bullshit they've done to the NBA since they got there in 2008. And yet they got the nerve to share a damn history with the Seattle Supersonics, which ain't right. And I heard the father mention 2016. Oh, Lord. Why are you going to mention 2016, knowing how much it pisses me off when that happened? Well, that, that, that's the only Mickey Mouse championship I could think of when it came to NBA to compare it to. We could say 2020, but that's a different discussion for another time. That's a, that's a 20, different championship. <laughs> 2016. I hate 2016. 2016 for sports was a f-ing joke <laughs> because you got Adam Silver clearing the way for LeBron to quote miraculously come back from a 3-1 deficit against the best team in the NBA and the Golden State Warriors and everybody praising LeBron when the deed's done, when the deed was done behind the scenes before game five when Draymond Green got suspended wrongfully. Yeah, I said it wrongfully. I snowman filled me in on all the details. I went and took a look at it, and he was wrongfully suspended. If you were to look at the letter of the law, which I often do, and snowman does also, and so do the guys here, the suspension should have come in the Western Conference Finals against the damn Thunder, which shouldn't exist in the first place. And now you got Draymond Green out for game five, the Warriors lose 112 to 97 and the comeback begins because game six, they pissed off Stephen Curry so much that he threw his mouthpiece and got ejected. LeBron James is sticking out his chest, which is full of shit right now. And thought that he was just simply the man after he fake cried on the floor at Oracle Arena. And I say fake cry because the next year he got a foot put in his ass. And the year after that, his ass got swept, so f*** you, LeBron. I've always said that, and I will say it. I'll keep saying it. F*** you, LeBron. You've ruined the damn NBA with your presence and your fake basketball. F*** you. And everybody else that plays like him, including James Harden, who's a real bitch. F*** you, too. My, my, well, child, what is with the ho- my child, what is with the hostility? Shut up. There's a lot of profanity here. Joel Embiid is a real bitch. F*** you too. Y'all need to get the f*** out of the NBA and return it back to where it belongs. The players and the fans. You know why people have hated the Golden State Warriors for as long as they did? Because they played team basketball. You know why they hated the San Antonio Spurs and they still hate them to this day? Because they played team basketball. You know why they hated the Bulls in the 90s and wanted to crunk clown Michael Jordan, who to me is the greatest player that ever lived, and wanted to clown Michael Jordan because they played team basketball. LeBron is an individual that can't play basketball worth sh- my and he never will be a complete basketball player because he never desires to work on his game like the stupid uh, he is. Uh, at least we ain't in church. Shut oh, up. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. God. You and you, LeBron. You. You understand that? I could give two shits about all the hell with it. I could give two shits about what you do on the basketball floor. 
I could give two sh about what you do off the basketball floor, which ain't much because you got a school bearing your name and the kids don't know how to pass classes in there. How do you like them apples? Apparently LeBron has taught them well because he can't pass either. Well, we already knew that. He had assistance getting through St. Vincent, St. Mary. I'll talk about that conspiracy later. There's a couple more conspiracies with LeBron, and everybody wants to paint him as this all-American guy. Well, f all that, because I got some sh in my treasure chest that says otherwise. The back of Oklahoma City, and they don't need to belong in the NBA with their bullsh tactics because Adam Stern didn't want to keep the team in Seattle and reach into his pockets or the league pockets to help them build an arena that would house the Seattle Supersonics and not Key Arena or Climate Pledge Arena or whatever the f*** it is right now to house the Seattle Supersonics, which was the old Seattle Sonic Coliseum, which is where Climate Pledge Arena is. And I'm getting confused on what they call, I'm getting confused on what they call the right now. The NBA needs to stop being little bitches and give a team back to Seattle that belongs there. They need to tell Oklahoma City to f off. Oklahoma City does not belong in the NBA. As I said yesterday, ain't a damn thing in Oklahoma City. Tell me something. What the f are you going to do after the game? I'll tell you what you do after the game. You're going to go to bed. You're going to go to bed as sure as what I do. I typically don't watch. I got sermons to work on. Why? Because you ain't got sh to do in Oklahoma City. So why would you put a professional basketball team there and have nothing surrounding it? That's like when I went to see Arco Arena back in the 90s. It's Arco Arena and nothing but a farm around it. But now they got the Golden One Center and places around that, and it looks good. Plan to do, plan to sneak up with the snowman on his stadium tour and do that. And by the way, <clears throat> if y'all want to support the show and his stadium tour, you can look right there. Now, back to Oklahoma City. Why is the Oklahoma City Thunder in existence? Ain't a damn thing in Oklahoma City to do. And I hate them that are in charge of it. All right? I hate them. I hate OKC because it gave us Russell Westbrook for a time, and everyone thought Russell, West Russell Westbrook was the best player in the NBA, which is a crock of bush. Kevin Durant was that team, and nobody wanted to acknowledge it. And after they got spanked on a 3-1 comeback by Golden State in 2016, they've been nothing but the toilet. And they will forever be the toilet. Okay, see. That's why the Warriors went in there and spanked their asses like the children they are. And as long as we're talking NBA, let me get this out of the way. I don't buy the Cleveland Cavaliers either. I don't care what the f*** their legacy supposedly is with LeBron. You know what the legacy of the Cleveland Cavaliers is? Craig Elo. Why? Because as Jim Durham said once upon a time, it always happens to Craig Elo. And LeBron, it always happens to you too. We don't give a single solitary f about you and your supposed basketball play. Why? Because yes, LeBron... It is you. It has always been you. It always will be you. Forever and ever and ever. And the church rose and said, Amen. Now you're taking my lines. What are you trying to do? <laughs> ah, shut up. And you know something else while I'm talking about people that cost team seasons? How about this one? Yes, Lamar is you. You understand that? You got lucky against Cincinnati because Cincinnati don't know how to complete in the red zone. As far as the Chicago Bears go, you wrenched everything for this fool. This is a fool. This is a fool. Now, I don't have to say anything about this. Look at the look on that face. Have you seen him? That look name look on... is missing right now, and I have a missing person's case for that person right there. Oh, you do, huh? And I better, oh get, and I better get the hell out of here. All right, I've cussed enough. I filled up the cuss jar. 
commissioners out of commissioners out of here because apparently we got a detective coming in to talk about the missing case of Dak Prescott. Oh, by the way, Dak Prescott, you a bitch. That's you know why you a you know you know what Ezekiel Elliott, you a bitch too. All y'all cow Dallas Cowboys some bitches because y'all had a chance to beat the 49ers and you didn't do it. Four incompletions that were way over the receiver's head. And C.D. Lamb, you don't deserve to wear number 88. There's only two players in Cowboy history I know that deserve to wear the number. And those are Drew Pearson and Michael Irvin. And they're both all the famers. Des Bryant, you a bitch too. You had no business wearing number 88. Man, I'll tell you what. Des Bryant, you a mediocre receiver. Because you couldn't catch when it counted. I said it. And I mean it. All right. I better get out of here before I get shoved out of here because there's a, a, a case to be reopened. Y'all take care now. You hear?